Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. Sorry it's been a while since my last video as I've been AFK whilst in the middle of moving. But I'm finally starting to get settled down in a new area and so I'm ready to get back to my videos. In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a bumper mechanic for our marble game. This game mechanic could also be used in other games such as that old pinball game that used to be on every Windows computer. Here's an example of a bumper mechanic that's used in the game Stumble Guys. Alright, so the first thing that I'll do is demonstrate this game mechanic. So here I have my marble and if I click start, my marble drops down to the platform and I can move it with WASD. And if I run the marble into one of these capsules, you can see that it bounces back. And so that's what we'll be creating in this video. All right, so first off, we'll begin by creating a capsule object within our scene. So I'll click the plus sign in the hierarchy window, and then I'll go down to 3D object and select capsule. I've then renamed this object to bumper now the capsule is just a placeholder for now. In the future, I'd plan to replace it with something that looks more like a bumper from a pinball machine. And on this object, we want to make sure that we at least have some sort of collider. And so I have a capsule collider which came with this object. After this, we'll need to create a new C Sharp script. And so I've created this script which is called Bounce Back Bumper. And we can go ahead and open it up. Now we don't need to include anything new up at the top, but I've added this class to my InfoGamer namespace, which you actually don't have to do. And so the first thing that we'll do is add two new variables at the beginning of this class, and both of these variables are serialized fields. The first is a string, which I've called player tag, and the second is a float, which I've called bounce force. Once we have these variables, we just need to add the onCollisionEnter function. This is a special function that is triggered any time two physics objects have their colliders touch. And inside this function, the first thing that we want to do is add an if statement, where we're checking to see if collision.transform.tag is equal to our player tag variable. This will make it so that whatever we put inside this if statement will only be executed if our player object interacts with the bumper. Now inside this if statement, you can see that I've gone through several different iterations for how I want this game mechanic to behave. I've tried adding force to the ball in the direction of the normal for the point in which the two objects touch but I found that this wasn't very consistent. I've also tried calculating the direction from the center of the bumper to the current position of the ball when it interacts with the bumper, and then adding force based on that direction. And this iteration works just fine, but what my decision ended on was the add explosion force function. But before we do this, we need to get the rigid body of the other object, which is the ball. And so I have a new local variable of type rigid body called other RB, and I'm setting it equal to collision.rigidbody. We can then use other RB to call the add explosion force function. For this function, we need to pass in our bounce force for the first parameter. Then for the center of the explosion force, I'm using the point in which the ball touches the bumper. And this is collision.contacts index zero dot point. And then for the final parameter, we want to pass in the radius for our explosion force and I'm just using five. Once you have all this, we can save our script and go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we want to select our bumper object and attach our bounce back bumper script. For the player tag, we can then type in the tag that we're using for our player object, which is player. And for the bounce force, I've typed in 100. Once you've done this, we can then create a prefab out of this object by dragging it into our project window. And then we can add this prefab to our scene as many times as we like. Finally, we can test out our project and see if it works. Now that's everything I'm going to show you in this video for how to create a bumper prefab inside Unity. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And finally, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos.